In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Augsburg, and we give thanks for your presence here today. And if you're visiting with us, a special welcome to you. And please let us know how we can share with you in your faith journey. Today, as we gather for worship, we are honored to have with us Michael Schulte, who is a pastoral intern at The Dwelling, the newest congregation in the North Carolina Senate right across the parking lot, and a great partner that we've shared with since its inception, as he'll talk a little bit more about in his sermon today. Also from the dwelling community, we have Gary and Ashley up front who are part of the congregation and do some great work as part of our partnership each day. So welcome and we're glad to have you here to share the word today. A reminder that one of the first ways that we did come into community together was through the uh, overflow shelter and that season still takes place through March. And if you're looking for ways to be involved either as a volunteer in the evenings and preparing of meals or in bags for the next day, uh, please check in with either Pastor Katie or Robin, as both of them uh, understand all the nuances of that and would love to get you all connected. One way that we want to connect our whole community and to get a sense of where we are and what God is calling us to is going to take place on Wednesday, February 1st. We're going to have another Augsburg address. That's kind of a state of the union of where things are and all of the ways that God is at work in our community. There's a lot happening, and we're usually not all privy to everything, but it's important for us to know the fullness of what's going on as we do the work of the church together. So uh, to make that day even more meaningful, we're going to have an opportunity to go and tour the ACC to see the newly uh, renovated spaces before uh, that time. We'll be able to have a meal together. We'll have child care during the address itself. It's going to be a great day. So you should have uh, in your mailbox either tomorrow, Tuesday, if you're a member of Augsburg, a uh, letter that shares all the information on that. And if you don't get that, let us know. Uh, it'll also be available in our weekly online communications. But we would ask that you plan out for February, Mar February 1st to please join us for the Augsburg Address. Everything else that God is at work is doing can be found on your green sheet, and our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who lived in a land of deep darkness. On them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message above the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, the Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region in the shadow of death, light has dawned. And from that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nests, their nets, and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Michael, don't. Well, good morning. My name is, is Michael Schulte. And I am the, the pastoral intern at the dwelling right across the street on Broad Street. And I'd like to thank Pastor Paul and the rest of the leadership team here for allowing me to come and share more about the ministries of the dwelling. As many of you know, the dwelling is a mission development partnership between the North Carolina Synod of the ELCA and the Moravian Church Southern Province. And the dwelling's mission, we seek to build community primarily but not exclusively with neighbors in our community experiencing homelessness along with their intersecting identities of addiction and recovery incarceration and reintegration back into society and then also severe and persistent 
mental health challenges. And the fact of the matter is that the dwelling would not be the dwelling without the support of Augsburg Lutheran Church. Right? This ministry was, was birthed out of your church's commitment to partner with local churches and to open a winter overflow shelter. And your willingness to use your family life center as a place of respite in the, the four coldest months of the year helps ensure that no one in our city has to spend a night out in the cold, potentially might have to die from freezing temperatures. Right? Your commitment is keeping people safe and alive. And this is the work of the gospel. This is the work of Christ. And Augsburg is also responsible for cultivating that call of our lead pastor, Reverend Emily Harkins Norris, because it was in her role here at Augsburg as the director of Emerging Ministries that she first identified the need for a church community to be built specifically and intentionally for our neighbors without homes. And it's out of her conversations with folks in that Family Life Center that she knew that the dwelling, that God was indeed planting a call in her life to plant the dwelling. And so in February 2020, a month before that, that once-in-a-century global pandemic, Pastor Emily had finally, after several no's, received a yes from the Synod. And she began as a mission developer, starting the dwelling. And in hindsight, uh, beginning a ministry a month before a once-in-a-century global pandemic is not really good practice. But it's very clear the spirit was moving here in Winston-Salem. right? Because a year after the dwellings founded, when we first started worshiping, uh, we had six people in attendance at that first Sunday. Uh, three people on staff and one staff member's dad. But a year later, we have 87 people on average worship with us each week. And we feed between 120 and 150 people every single Sunday after our worship service, right? The spirit is moving here in Winston-Salem and the dwelling. This community of misfits and former felons, this community of addicts and outcasts has become the fastest growing church in the evangelical Lutheran church in America. But the Spirit is moving and hundreds of people are responding to that radical Lutheran message that Christ's unconditional love is for all people. The Spirit's movement has compelled dozens to become baptized and dozens more to reaffirm their childhood baptismal vows. The Spirit's movement has inspired many to enter into recovery. And the Spirit's movement has engendered faith, what Martin Luther calls that living, daring confidence that a better future is possible, that one day all people will have a house and that all people will eat. And today's gospel text describes Jesus calling the first four of the twelve disciples. And as Jesus walks among the Sea of Galilee, the banks there, Jesus sees two brothers. He sees Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. And they were brothers who were casting a net out into the sea because they were fishermen, and because their livelihood depended on that catch. Right? Jesus sees these two brothers, and he says to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And Jesus' message must have been pretty compelling, because as soon as he says that, the Bible says that the brothers, quote, immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. And as I read, I really have to wonder, why was this opportunity to be fishers of people, why was that so intriguing to Peter and Andrew that they'd immediately follow Jesus? And a lot of times when we hear these, this, this lectionary passage being taught in churches, we see fishers of men and modern American Christianity says, that means we've got to go out and convert the souls of the lost. But that might not quite be. In the Hebrew Bible, especially the prophetic texts, texts which Jesus and his disciples would have been intimately familiar with, to be a fisher meant to use your hook to root out corruption. 
It was an image which conveyed that one day people who participate in oppression will be destroyed. And so in the book of Amos, God says to the people who, quote, oppress the poor and crush the needy, God says to them that time is surely coming upon you when they shall take you away with hooks, even the last of you with fish hooks. And in Amos, to be a fisher of men meant that you used your hook to root out those in the community who participate in the oppression of the poor and needy. It meant to stand up against the powers of this world and to level the playing field for those suffering at the margins. And then in the book of Hosea, the prophet condemns Israel for relying on foreign nations instead of aligning themselves with the purposes of the living God. The prophet writes, As Israel goes, I will cast my net over them. I will bring them down like birds of the air. I will discipline them according to the reports made by their assembly. Right? In Hosea, to be a fisher of men means to bring down destruction on those who align themselves with the powers of this world instead of aligning themselves with God. Hosea condemns those who care more about wealth and status and prestige than helping the most vulnerable in the community. And so when Peter and Andrew, two lowly fishermen, two outcasts who sweat each day under the heat of the sun, fighting day in and day out to make enough money to survive, when these fishermen hear Jesus say, follow me and I will make you fish for people, that message is so captivating, it's so intriguing to them because they are tired of suffering. They are tired of living as religious and ethnic minorities in the Roman Empire. They are tired of living in a place which is not set up for them to succeed. Right? Their wrists are tired of casting out nets. Their arms are worn from pulling in another catch. They are living in a world which names them as poor, as lowly, as unworthy, and they are ready. They are ready for the world to turn. They are ready for God's reign to be realized here on earth. And so today, in a world which names our neighbors without homes as unworthy, in a society which blames the problems of the poor on the people themselves, in a city which is built for the pleasure of the privileged. The dwelling seeks to recast the narrative. The dwelling seeks to be fishers of people. The dwelling seeks to root out oppression and corruption so that God's reign, albeit a really feeble glimpse, That God's reign could be a reality here and now in Winston-Salem and beyond. And we enact this feeble glimpse of this coming reign of God by each week, inviting our people to bring their brokenness, right? Their mental health history, their criminal record, their homelessness. We invite them to bring it all and to lay it at the foot of the cross. Because we believe that Christ can indeed redeem it all. And we dare to believe that no matter who you are or what you have done, that Christ names you as a worthy and beloved child of God who deserves a second chance. Because we also dare to believe that there is indeed nothing in all of creation that can separate anyone from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so to share more about these commitments, instead of just me saying them out loud, I'd like to invite Uh, Gary to come forward here. And as Gary comes forward, he's our our minister of showers, and he has experiences of of street homelessness, of incarceration. He has stayed in the Family Life Center here at Augsburg. And so, Gary, could you just tell us a little bit about uh, before you encountered the dwelling, just your sort of experience with homelessness and incarceration and how you eventually came to the dwelling's doors? Well, I've been homeless off and on for about 20 years. Um, I met Emily down here in the Oak Flow Shelter in 2015. Uh, wound up going back into prison from 2016 to 2020. Um, got hooked up with Emily again at the shower trailer. 
and started volunteering, helping her, you know, set up, tear down, you know, whatever, clean the, clean the showers when they were done. Eventually, she asked me if I'd run them over on Sundays over there at the dwellings for, I said, sure. Well, the guy I was uh, working under, he left, and they turned around and offered me the job of doing the shower trailers on a permanent basis. And I have enjoyed it ever since I started volunteering. And can you talk a little bit about what that second chance meant to you to be able to get, get a job where people were, were welcoming and, and wanted you to be there? A lot of people, society mainly, has a preconceived notion that homeless people are useless. That's not true. I was built to work. I love to work. I enjoy it. And when Emily gave me that second chance at a job to help me uh, get a paycheck, get back on my feet, uh, right now I'm on a boarding house, I, that's all we, all we want is a second chance. They don't look at my past. They never looked at my past. And they say, okay, he wants to work. Let's give him a job. And I thank them every single day for it. And can you talk a little bit about, so we obviously just moved into our new building and we're so thankful for the support that, that Augsburg has given our community. So can you talk a little bit about what the new building means to you? It's like, uh, whenever you go into it, Emily welcomes you with open arms that you feel safe in there if you feel like home um that new building is fantastic i mean i help with some of the renovations i help painting uh help move furniture around help uh put cabinets in help take them out and it just to help go from point a to the finished product to see what you've actually done, to see where it was and, and where it is now, is just a sense of accomplishment. Awesome. Well, I know that we're a Lutheran, but if we could give Gary a round of applause for having the courage. Thanks, bro. Well, Thanks, bro. So I hope that Gary's story can remind us that the gospel is impacting real people in our community, it can remind us that the power of Christ's unconditional love, that it can truly transform people's lives. And I hope it also illustrates the power of that second chance, that ability to get a second chance on life, the ability for the church at its best to be the image of the risen Christ by offering a home, by offering forgiveness, by offering true belonging. And so for the dwelling to continue to impact folks like Gary, we need people like you. And that's why we're so thankful that Augsburg has allowed us to, has gifted us with the Augsburg Community Center. Right, this building will help us to expand our ministries. Because of that building, we're going to be able to feed more people. We're going to be able to provide showers to more people. And we're going to be able to share space with organizations that provide direct services to our people. Right, the community center will become this, this hub which elevates the lives of people living on the margins in our city. And so I'd just like to, again, thank you for, for your generous support of that campaign. And as we go back to the gospel, before Jesus calls Peter and Andrew, he, he warns, Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Right? Jesus, to repent means to turn. Jesus is asking people to turn. To turn from their wealth and their status and their prestige and to turn towards the faces of the marginalized by building intimate relationships with them, by learning their stories, by knowing their names. And it's my hope that you, the people of Augsburg Lutheran, will be so captivated by the message of the gospel that you will continue to turn your faces towards the marginalized. I hope that you will join the dwelling in building intimate relationships with those suffering in our city. Right? I hope that that building is just the beginning, the beginning of something that ends in real relationships 
with our people, which provide them with the support and the community they need to know that they are worthy of that second chance. I hope that you will know our people so well that you see them on the streets and you know their name. And today you can continue to support the work of the dwelling. You can learn these stories by volunteering at the Overflow Shelter, by preparing or serving a community meal on Sunday mornings, by packing hygiene kits which we can distribute from our mobile shower trailer, or even by going to volunteer during our weekly community center hours to really interact with our people. And one other option that's coming up quickly here is that there'll be an, another opportunity to learn about the solutions that are happening to try to end homelessness here in Winston-Salem and in other places across our country. We're going to be offering our second Witnessing Homelessness Cohort, which is a class that meets on Tuesday nights to learn more about what are the, the causes of homelessness. How has housing policy led to the fact that the homeless are the fastest growing demographic in the United States? And so we had people from Augsburg participate last week, and Barbara, or not last week, last semester, Barbara and Robin and David and, and Carmen Menzel. And so we're grateful for their participation and hope that you will join us this time. And more information about that will be included in the newsletter. But friends, the work of the dwelling, right, the work of the dwelling is kingdom work. It's work which challenges our church's commitment to embrace all people. It's work which dares us to believe that Christ died for all people, including you. It's work which reminds us that even when we fall short of the glory of God, that Jesus, every time we fail, every time we're in need of forgiveness, that Jesus welcomes us back into the loving arms of God, no questions asked. That Christ sits with us in our confessions and loves us in spite of them. Right? Jesus is right when he says the kingdom of heaven is near. Right? The kingdom of heaven is near. It's, it looks a lot like across the street. And you, in the fullness of who you are, are invited to take part in God's heavenly reign. You are invited to take part in the kingdom of God right here and right now in Winston-Salem. You are invited to take part in the great work that God is doing here. So we hope that you will come and see and come and be a part of God's work that's transforming the lives of real people in our city. Come and see. Amen. Amen.
together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Make your church one in purpose, proclaiming the message of the cross. Help us to work together across differences and energize ecumenical partnerships locally and across the world. Lord, in your mercy, in Christ your reign comes near and calls all to repentance. Break the rod of the oppressor in every nation. Dispel the shadow of death in places of war and persecution. Grant leaders who lift the yokes that burden those in need. Lord, in your mercy, be a stronghold for those in trouble and a rock for all who are afraid. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment, or are isolated and lonely. Today, we lift up to you Tommy Napier, Anne Marie Sneed, Ruth Marie Kinley, Susie Walden, Sue Hill, Pamela Barney, Bobby Cashin, Gray Boyette, Emily Wolner, Sharon Schoderbeck, Terry Hayworth, Tony Myers, Phyllis Adkinson, David Johnson, and all who we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Sustain the ministries of this congregation and all churches in this community. Especially this day, we lift up to you the new work being done at the dwelling. Nurture each congregation's unique witness to your presence. Foster mutual respect. Inspire our cooperation in loving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, both known and unknown. Help us to leave our nets and follow and bring us with them to the fullness of your promise of eternal life. Today we remember Mary and Morgan, Sarah Weyer, Keith Bowman, Chris Amarini, Nancy Julian, Terry Coda, Joshua Todd, Clark Comer. Lord, in your mercy, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please be seated.
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, revealed his glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When we drink this cup, we share in the blood of Christ.
we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. 